The Texans lost to the Colts 30-23. to And honestly, I'm not even mad at the Texans, honestly. Like, I'm chill because when the schedule first came out, I knew this game was going to be a very, very tough game to win, regardless of Andrew Luck or no Luck. I mean, look how many things were in the Colts' favor. I mean, they were at home, coming off a of bye week. Like, I believe, i seen this stat on Reddit earlier this week. I think it was Reddit. It might have been Twitter. But apparently, like, 80% of the teams that are coming off a of bye week and play at home tend to win. So it was already a tough game to begin with. Defensively, you know, we've been known that our secondary is trash. Right, coming into the season, we knew our secondary was going to be an issue. Let's not act like that is something new, something, you know, that was just revealed today. You know, it's nothing new. Our secondary is trash. We knew that. And then, you know, coming into the game, Roby was out, our best corner, even though I didn't like the signing initially. He's been playing well, or he had been playing well, and then he got hurt, and he missed this game. And then Joseph gets hurt. Okay, you know, we're pretty much screwed there. But then Keon Croissant gets hurt, and then Philip Gaines gets hurt towards the end, too. So, like, Oh, and to Sean Gibson. Can't forget to Sean Gibson. You know, all season long, the Texans have done a good job of stopping tight ends. To Sean Gibson gets hurt. Eric Ebron has himself a pretty good game, so. I guess you could say to Sean Gibson's been doing his job this season, because, yeah, he wasn't there. Tight end has a good game. So, yeah, like, I can't blame that on the Texans, I can't really hold it against them when special teamers are playing defense, you know? So, yeah, and then you got the whole penalties, man, like, Jesus, these refs were terrible. Like, they were bad. Especially in the first half, third quarter, fourth quarter, they calmed down a bit. I'm pretty sure they called them down and be like, hey man, chill out with the penalties because Jesus Christ, dude. It felt like every third down there was some sort of penalty on the Texans. And the thing is, they never showed the replay. It was rare when they showed a replay of where the penalty happened. So, I mean, I'm just saying. And then he had the Deshaun Watson touchdown where he threw it to D Hop. Oh no, you know. That didn't count because he was within the grasp of, you know, whatever the hell the excuse was for that. You know, like, these are game-changing plays. You should know what type of quarterback Deshaun Watson is. They're acting like Deshaun Watson is, I don't know, freaking a statue like Matthew Stafford or something, you know? Not saying Matthew Stafford's bad or anything. I like Stafford, but... You know, know what quarterback is playing. Deshaun Watson doesn't go down easily. Even Brissett doesn't go down easily. Russell Wilson doesn't go down easily. So you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't whistle that dead. That took four points off the board from the Texans. Like that, that, that would have been huge down the stretch. That will, that would have been momentum shifting. Uh, it, it was just annoying honestly like every single time flag 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 and honestly that's not even the worst part either like the commentators man like they were so pro Colts like the touchdown to Kiki QT the guy kept freaking rambling on about how that should have been a penalty on DeAndre Hopkins and, you know, if he mentioned that, that would have been fine. But this guy straight up kept talking about it for, like, five minutes, man. Like, Jesus Christ. Just, honestly, it wasn't a good game to watch. Like, it was unenjoyable. Commentators, you know, on the Colts nuts the whole game. You had the refs making the game 
borderline unwatchable. Like, I hate when the refs make the games about themselves. Like, I want to talk about Texans versus Colts. I want to talk about the plays DeAndre made. I want to talk about how Jacoby Brissett shredded our defense. But these penalties, man, like, they're outrageous. And I said it on my week six recap video when the Lions got screwed over, man. This shouldn't be about the refs. I don't want to talk about the refs. But when the refs, like, make the game unenjoyable, you kind of have to talk about it, you know? But, you know, enough about those annoying old men. Let's, you know, actually talk about the game. Like I said, Brissett shredded the Texans' defense. And honestly, it's not a surprise. Shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. And it wasn't anything spectacular. It was like the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Like the coach straight up didn't have to do anything special because straight up it's simply my guy's better than your guy type of thing. You know, their receivers are better than our corners. Like straight up. I mean, come on, let's be real here. Their receivers are better than our corners. So, all they had to do was run simple crossing routes. It's like every third down, you know, I felt like everybody was open simply because they were just better than the Texans. I mean, their old line, they did a good job protecting Brissett. I think Brissett was hit a few times, but there was moments where Brissett literally had all day to throw. I'm not even exaggerating that. Like, he legit had... All day to throw on certain occasions. Felt like Romeo Cornell had to blitz to bring pressure. But, I mean, at least the Texans did a good job of containing the run. But, if we're being honest, how much of that was on the Colts not really even choosing to run as much? Because start, right off the bat, you know, starting the game, the Colts just started passing and passing and passing and passing. Like, they, they knew. They know our weakness. Our weakness is our secondary. We have a stout defensive front, so what do they do? Just throw the ball. Why not? It worked. Anyone could do it, honestly. So, yeah, there's like no surprise right there. And as for the Texans' offense, O-line, I feel like they did a pretty good job besides from Rod Johnson. And that sucks, man, because Rod Johnson looked good in preseason. He looked good against the Jags, but he had a pretty bad game here against the Colts. There was one play where he had a lot of sack, and he just, like, tripped. I don't know how he felt, but he fell. But Rod Johnson ended up getting hurt, and then, what's his name, Skipper came in. The offensive tackle we just picked up off the Patriots practice squad. So he comes in, and I thought he did a pretty decent job. The Texans' run game... Wasn't there during the first half, but in the second half, they really started getting going. But that could have easily been because the Colts weren't committing to stopping the run that much anymore because the Texans were behind with, like, you know, limited time on the clock. So, obviously, you know, they'd assume they're going to pass. So, yeah. And their passing game... I thought our passing game was decent. I mean, D-Hop had 100 yards. Kenny still had 100 yards. Will Fuller got hurt early on dealing with a hamstring injury. Man, I swear. Like, there's, like, something going on in Houston with, like, the hamstring injuries. Like, this happened last year. Obviously, the year before that, the Rockets had the Chris Paul hamstring injury. And they would have beat the Warriors had he not gotten hurt. And now, you know, you have Roby dealing with a hamstring J. Joe was dealing with a hamstring. And now Will Fuller dealing with a hamstring. Oh, yeah. Kenny Stills. Jace came back from a hamstring. So, I don't know, man. Are these hamstring injuries? I don't know. They, they got to do something about that, you know? I don't know. Maybe Brian Cushing can give everyone some PEDs. No, I don't do that, Brian. But, yeah. I thought we passed the ball pretty well. I mean, Sean threw two picks. One of them, uh, it was just a bad decision, but I saw where he was going there, like where he was going with the pass, he just overthrew it, but regardless, I didn't think it was a smart decision, but that's fine because we still had a chance to win the game. And then the second pick, Deshaun slightly overthrew it, threw it too high, but I mean, the ball hit Kiki right in the hands. 
So he should have caught it. Yes, Deshaun could have made a better throw, but Kiki definitely should have caught that. It hit his hands, and it's not even like he tipped it with his fingers or anything. No, it's straight up hit his hands. He had to jump up for it. If Deshaun throws a better ball, he don't have to jump up for it. But regardless, he jumped up, hit his hands, he drops it. Ball just bounces right into the Colts defensive player's hands, and it gets picked off. And Texans lose the game. And honestly, like I said, I'm not mad. Like, I'm not mad at all. Like, the Colts, like I said in my prediction video, they're a very well-coached team. Like, it happens, man. Like, it happens. It's not like the Texans got blown out or anything. It's not like the Texans didn't show up. Because at the end of the game, Deshaun Watson got the ball back with two minutes left. Well, actually, he got it back with four minutes left. And then he got it back with two minutes left. And the Texans had a chance to tie the game and before that win the game. So I'm not mad. It's not like it's not like this game was week four against the Panthers all over again. Today was just a day where, you know, injuries at an already bad position screwed us. Um bad refing in my opinion. The ball just didn't bounce our way. It's just that simple. It happens. This game was going to be a tough one the moment we realized. Honestly, no, not even that. This game was going to be a tough one even before the schedule came out. Just the Colts being in our division. We already knew this game was going to be a tough one. So let's not sit here and pretend like, oh my God, the sky is falling. Because uh, the Texans are still 4-3. and three. The Texans are probably still going to win this division. Because they're going to get healthier. And the Texans now have to go trade for Chris Harris. Yes, go trade for Chris Harris. I know some people might ask me, should the Texans trade for this guy, that guy, or whatever. Yes, 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 yes. The Texans have to go trade for a corner. The guy I'm keeping my eye on is Chris Harris. Patrick Peterson, the Cardinals already said they're not trading him. And plus, the Cardinals are like, what? 3-3-1 three, three, and one right now, so they're technically still in contention. The Broncos are 2-5. and five. They're pretty much dead in the water, so go get Chris Harris. And, oh yeah, let's talk about something huge too, man. And this one sucks. John Weeks, man. He got hurt early in the game, but you know what? John Weeks is one tough guy because even though he was hurt, limping around, Walking gingerly, the guy played the whole game. So, give John Weeks his, you know, his praise. He deserves it, man. If there's one guy who had an outstanding game this game, flawless game, it's John Weeks. Come on, let's start acknowledging John Weeks because the guy is tough. Oh, yeah, and speaking on special teams, Kaimi Fairbairn didn't miss a kick, so... That's good. Also, speaking on special teams, I don't know what in the world DeAndre Carter's thinking sometimes, man. I, there's been so many games this season where I'm like, DeAndre Carter, what are you doing? And today was no difference. Like, late in the game, our second to last drive where we took the safety, and we'll get into that too. DeAndre Carter let the ball hit the ground and bounce and it rolled like all the way to the five like fair catch it like come on dude what are you doing like he's done that so many times I feel like he's given us bad field position so many times this season like he's got to do better and now let's talk about that safety honestly I tweet out that that was a dumb decision I know what O'Brien was doing you know but I just thought the Texans should have went for it on fourth down. I like going for it on fourth down. It's fun and all. But, yeah. I knew what he was doing. Obviously, you take the safety seven-point game. You pump from the 20 instead of your end zone. Better field position. At that point, you're just hoping to get a stop and then score a touchdown. Kick the PAT and make it and go to overtime. But if you want to be ballsy, obviously, you go for two and win the game. You know, the first half of that idea worked out. The second half didn't. You know, the defense made the stop. Texans got the ball back with better field position that than if they would have punted from their end zone because 
the Colts got the ball back at what like their 20 instead of our probably like 45 if we would have put it from the end zone so it's a field position thing smart thing to do but I just wanted to go for for it on fourth down you know like eff it you know why not but yeah offense couldn't score Kiki dropped the ball and they got picked off and the game was over there but yeah I think the Texans are now I believe it's considered one game behind in the division because it's like you know they have one less loss but they have the tiebreaker to us right now so yeah I think it's considered one game and yeah that's pretty much all I have for you guys for today be sure to like comment and subscribe thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys later peace